So there are a multitude of different ways to go about scouting in Football Manager, from using the inbuilt recruitment focus tools to scouring through players individually and manually scouting them to some more esoteric options, many of which I discussed last year. But I wanted to make sure that all of them were accessible in one place. And, and this is that place. Now, I'm not suggesting that this is every single scouting method that you can use in FM. In fact, it's far from it. But it is every method that I actively use in my saves to find players young and old at every single level across the footballing pyramids of the world. The way the video is going to work is that we're going to start at the very bottom in the lowest leagues with tips to sign players and find players at the very lowest leagues, working our way all the way up to the top for scouting for more elite sides at the very top level of the game. But a lot of the things I will discuss at the lower leagues will still work as you push your way up the period, especially some of the manual scouting stuff. I've used chapters so that you should be able to easily navigate through the video to find the things that apply to you and your save. But as I said, there may be things that you may not think will apply to you that will actually potentially be very useful. So I'd urge you to check those out as well. Much of the advice here is predicated on the idea that you would have attribute masking switched on. So you're not just able to see all of the attributes of the players from the beginning. Uh, and obviously, if that was the case, it wouldn't require anywhere near as much scouting. However, if you do like to play the game with disabled attribute masking in here, there are some tips as well that you should probably probably find very useful, again, when it comes to relating to the manual scouting stuff. But just know that this is based on the idea of having it with the fog of war, so to speak, because that's how I personally like to play the game. And I know that's how a lot of you do as well. And obviously, if you do have any scouting tricks that you like to use in your saves, drop them in the comments. I'd love to hear them because I'm always open to new stuff. And I shouldn't really have to say this, but I kind of do because it's YouTube. You don't have to do any of these things. This is just simply some of the things that I do that I find helpful when it comes to scouting in the game. If you've got your own methods, that is spectacular. Enjoy. And with all that said, uh, let's get ourselves stuck in, shall we? Now, we're going to begin in the sixth tier of English football, the lowest playable league that you have access to. I realise that this isn't technically, as far as quality goes, the lowest level that you can play at at the start, but I felt it was a good base point as it's the sort of system I'm familiar with. But you can translate a lot of this to other leagues anyway. I chose Chelmsford City for this example. Uh, for no reason, really. I just kind of like them. Because when you're managing at a level like this, you're not going to have a particularly large number of scouts. So you have to make the work that they do and the work that you can do alongside them count. And that's where the first couple of things come in. So let's start off with agent offers. This is normally something I turn off after a season or two because they just get annoying. But in the early stages of a save, it could be extremely powerful, especially in the lower leagues. Especially as at a level like this, you can see we have one scout and a maximum of two, three if we count the chief scout. That is not a lot. And we need to make them do a lot of work. So there's ways around that. And that's by getting other people to do do our work for us. The first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you can even receive the agent offers. So we're going to head over to the scouting center, ignore all of this for the moment, we'll come back to this later, and just go straight to the actual scouting center page. But what we want to find is the stuff over here. Out of interest, if you are sick of receiving individual emails about certain players, just make sure that you force everything you can straight into the um, scouting inbox like this. That way you won't get individual cards for certain players. I find that can be annoying and clutters clot your inbox up, but that's how you do it. Just force it all to the scouting center. You just want to make sure that for the moment anyway, in the early stages, you have all of this ticked here. And and for free agent offers as well. These will get you players that have clubs. These will get you players that don't have clubs. Pretty straightforward. Obviously, you can toggle with these to your heart's content. For the moment, I'm just going to leave it open because wouldn't it be cool to get a 45 year old player? And honestly, I tend to adjust this to be a week outside of transfer windows as well, but it just depends. That's not relevant for this though. But while you're there, you might want to set off a trial to three weeks because I'll explain why in a bit. The only other thing I'd advise you to do in here, and this is not specific to lower league scouting, it's just good practice. I find is if you go into the advanced filters, you can actually control a lot about what you see. Uh, this is entirely up to you, but the one thing I would advise you to turn off is the started scout player one. This one here. I always have this ticked off, basically, which will then, of course, update this. But the reason I do that is because sometimes you'll get a scout report in your scouting center that will basically just say, I've started scouting this player. And you're like, yeah, I know. I just told you to do that. I don't need you cluttering me with these emails. So that basically prevents those from coming in there. So you'll only actually see in your scouting center updates about a player that you've actually decided to scout or it's new information. It's not just telling you things you've already known. And I just find that that's the best way of dealing with that. But what these things are going to do is it's going to allow agents of players that are either at clubs and looking for new ones uh, or don't have a club at all to bring you their player and basically say, hey, look at this guy. Isn't he great? And the great thing about that is your scouts don't have to do anything. And as you start to progress through your save over the first few days and weeks, you will get players in your scouting center that have come through via this. And I'll show you what I mean. Out of interest, now we're here. It is always worth scouting the uh, trial day, but I find that I rarely get good players from this compared to some of the other things. But it's always worth when this pops up hitting scout just in case. I also tend to ignore recruitment meetings as well as I just don't find them particularly useful and it just slows things down. But feel free to do them as well. You might find an occasionally solid player in these, but I find it's quite rare. So here we are as a little example. We've gone a few days in and you'll already 
already see that your inbox is going to be populated with players. They'll have varying ratings and all that jazz. But if you go up to this at the top, you can actually see where those players were sourced from. So there's one highly recommended, and I'm going to guess that's probably Joe Neal, as we know more about him, which we do. But you'll also see that there's four free agent offers, and that's these guys right here. And you're going to get an absolute deluge of these, depending on how big your database is set up over the next few weeks and months, and frankly, the next few seasons if you don't turn them off. But up front, it's really useful. For these guys, I tend to just use the basic stars as an outline of whether I'm going to pursue them any further. But when I say pursue them, I mean offering them trials. And that's why we set up that trial thing earlier. So what I'm going to do with these guys is we're just going to offer them transfer offer trial. Now this will default, well it should default in theory when you set it otherwise, to three weeks. The reason I use three weeks instead of four is because I find that you get basically the same amount of information over three weeks than you would do with four, and it's just a little bit quicker. Now, for the guy that already had a bid on him, most likely what's going to happen is that he's immediately going to sign for the club that he was under a bid from. I find that's a weird thing in FM, where it certainly has been the last few seasons, that when you offer a trial to a player who's already under a bid, they just instantly sign their contract. But we'll still get the other three guys. And players who are unattached will almost always accept your trial. If they're at a club, it will sometimes be declined by the club. In those situations, I would just try and scout them for a little bit, potentially. But as it happens, all of these guys are free agents. And you can see, Solomon signs for Aldershot immediately. That's just what we expected. So we're going to take these three guys on trial and that'll allow us to get a better idea of how good they actually are because often the stars can lie because you don't have too much information on the players. Now you can only offer 30 trials, I believe, at any one time. However, once those trials have been accepted and the players have joined the club on trial, you are, I believe, then free to offer more trials up to a certain amount. I'm not entirely sure what the number is. It seems to vary from club to club, but it's more than 30 from what, I reckon, from what I've seen in the past. And upon joining, you'll get like another update about the player and you can sort of see already that these guys are potentially excellent. Now, that might mean that they're better than what you can actually afford right now, but it might not. And it's always worth taking these players on trials just to find out because you can play with them in friendlies and get an idea of whether you actually do want to sign them. And the best part is your scouts have done nothing yet. This has all been done by you. They're out doing other things. And doing all this takes very little work because they're thrown into your inbox for you. You can just pick them up immediately and then decide if you want to actually pursue them further. But I wouldn't just go straight after the first guys you find because sometimes you'll find there are some genuine monsters available on free transfers. Like, I don't see any chance of this guy actually signing for us, but you never know. Okay, remarkably, he actually would. Now, we don't know his contract demands yet. That will come in time when you're actually scouting them further. Yeah, so he wants £900 a week. And do you know what, right? The thing is, that's not actually that bad. If I was to stretch some things around in here, we probably could actually get this guy. One little tip in situations like this. If they want a lot of money, but you can maybe stretch to it. Um, if they are playing for a large nation, i.e. in this case, England, and don't have any second nationalities, my skin actually shows them if they're there, then international wage cap clauses are very useful. So I can say, if you get one cap for England, I'll give you this wage. He's not getting an England cap. However, sometimes they'll let you offer a lot more here and it can get some of your wages down a little bit. Now, in this scenario, we probably would have to bump his appearance fee up and various other things in order to get him. It's not the best example. Point being, he's still vaguely attainable, potentially. In fact, he's actually agreed to that. <laughs> not only is he vaguely attainable, he's fully attainable. Now, is the international cap clause thing a bit cheesy? Yes, emphatically. Um, is it a single player game? Yes, emphatically. Do what you like, right? The reason you have to be careful with them, though, is because if they do have a secret second nationality, you don't want them randomly getting a cap for Botswana and absolutely destroying your wage structure. That, that's why you've got to be heeding that a little bit. Moving swiftly on from that, to quote Zealand, loans. Loans at the lowest level are absolutely imperative. It's so important. But one of the problems with FM over the last few years, and just in general, is that often when you try to approach a team to loan their player, they will demand, well, your firstborn, basically, for the privilege. Particularly as when the shoe is on the other foot, they'll always be like, I'll pay 1% of his wages, please. Obviously, you can find players that are applicable for loan by going into the scouting centre here and ticking loan and looking for them like this. The issue with this is that a lot of these players, you'll suffer with that exact same problem where they'll want lots of money for you to loan them. Even at the lowest levels, I find. It definitely helps when the player is at least listed for loan, but it does, it's not perfect. And we're on a budget here, damn it. Out of interest, the view I'm using here is actually baked into the skin. But again, I will link every single view and downloadable stuff I could possibly imagine in the description to this video for each stage. So just bear that in mind. If you're looking for a certain thing, it's almost certainly in the description. So these loans are great, but there's a better kind. And that is the senior affiliate loan. And they are chef's kiss. Now, of course, you need to have a senior affiliate in order to get senior affiliate loans, but it shouldn't take you too long until you can convince the board to make that happen. I'm just going to show you how. Now, in this scenario, they are going to turn me down because we've only just joined the club. But if you've been here, even for a tiny period of time, usually like a few months, they'll often say, go on then, have a go, provided you're doing okay in the league. But the way you do it is you go into board request, go into networking, and then go to senior affiliate. 
you can then ask them about it. They'll usually say no here, but you never know, right? Yeah, you haven't been with us very long. That one usually goes away after a little while. But the point is, when you do get a senior affiliate, things can change. Since we couldn't get one, I can't actually show you an example of it working in action, but I can still explain the mechanic behind it. So you can see that it would show up here if we actually had an affiliate club. Last year, the team I was managing, MTK Budapest, actually had an agreement with Liverpool, which was massive. But what this means is that most likely over the summer, once you've set up that affiliate agreement with the club, you'll get an inbox item uh, just in your normal scouting center that will suddenly contain a load of young players from that team. And these players are all players that basically they are willing to loan to you. And the best part is you can do it entirely for free. They will not expect you to pay their wages. And sometimes you can even negotiate a two year loan in that scenario. But if you get impatient with that as well, there's a quicker way to get some of those players too. Let's just say, for example, that we have Liverpool as a senior affiliate, which is possible potentially, but we won't actually know for sure. What you want to do then is go up and get a team report on the under 21s and under 18 squads, basically. When they come through, they'll look like this. You can then go into here and see the potential of those players. Um, it will give you an idea of who you might want to potentially go after for a loan. It's just a way of doing it. You'll still get that report later that will tell you which players they want you to have on loan potentially, but you can kind of cut to the chase a bit sooner. But it's good that you learn about the team report mechanic because that's going to be very useful later in this video. I realize this video is probably going to be quite long, but I wanted to make sure that everything got covered in as much depth as I could possibly do to sort of preempt questions but at the same time, make sure that I didn't make several videos about the same thing. I just kind of wanted to encapsulate every single scouting thing into one single video. So if you can grab yourself a few of these free loans, that's going to immediately strengthen your squad with some high potential players, admittedly that aren't yours, but they will play well for you. And some of them will be easily first team squad size at this point. And it's free. It doesn't cost you a single penny off of your transfer or wage budget. So continuing our hypothetical club, which apparently is Chelsea City now. So you've got yourself two or three massively good loans on loan from a senior affiliate side, which is not costing you a penny. You've also managed to strengthen the squad with let's say four or five uh really solid players on either free transfers who are unattached or maybe from another club whose agent is offering you them and you've still got plenty of room left in your budget potentially or your squad is just really good at this point it's certainly gone from bang average to well above average and the best part is you've really not had to do any scouting of any sort just yet it's all been brought to you on a silver platter so that is when we can start to pick up a bit of manual scouting now this is not specific to any kind of lower league thing this can be applied at any stage of any save that you're managing. I just wanted to address it here because the fact is this is when you can start doing it, I suppose. And I find this extremely useful if I'm looking for a very specific type of player to plug a hole in my squad. And it matters not whether you're managing Chelmsford or Lazio. Out of interest, now that a few more days have come past, you can see that yet more of these free agent offers are now entered our inbox. And my God, some of them are good. So let's just say in this example that I really need a new right back and none of the loanies really fit that mold. Neither do any of the uh, potential freebies. Let's just ignore and pretend that this chap here doesn't exist. So we're going to go over to scouting. Then we're going to go over two players in range. Pretty standard stuff so far. We're then just going to filter it by right backs. Pretty normal. Although while you're here, I would make sure that you say that this is accomplished just in case. We're then going to turn this off of loans, obviously, and switch it back to transfer. I like to use unsure just in case. But then, and this is the fun part, I've got custom views that I've built for every single position and role within those positions that exists in the game, basically. So as an example of right back, we're going to go into here and obviously um, you can download all of these. There's a big pack of them. Again, it will be in the description. You can import them one by one when you need them. But we've got one here for fullback attack and this is a filter for that so what this basically does is presents you with this so what we're seeing is 89 players all of whom can play right back for us and we're using this sort of uh i say it says filter but it's a view hopefully by the time you see this i've added one of the pack for an inverted fullback as well because that was new to the game this year if i haven't then you may have to create that yourself and what we're presented with is a list of 89 players that can play at right back that are at least slightly interested in us and we can see them all on this view now obviously you can use the search filters in here to apply like age requirements as well should you want to do that for now i'm just going to leave it open now the thing about these views is not only do they obviously show like the standard information about the players like the heights well not weights heights ages feet footedness nations all that sort of jazz but they also show in these two attribute blocks the key and the preferred attributes for the role that you've got selected which obviously is fullback attack here and these are based on the attributes that the game recommends for each of these roles with some extras that i've splashed in there that i feel are quite useful as well if you have the player fully scouted you can do it from their main profile but you can actually handle this stuff on the attribute side of things if you need to but these are based around the key and preferred attributes so the things that are highlighted in green are key attributes for the role and the things in blue are the preferred attributes and these relate to the things in the view i just showed you so all the things highlighted in green will be on the left side of the column and all the things highlighted in blue will be on the right side and it's just a great way of getting a visualization of how those players perform in the things that you in theory want for the role plus a few extra things again that i've added in here so i then decide what i'm most interested in having out of my fullback that's going to be played on attack so let's just say that it's crossing i really want a player that can cross now admittedly that doesn't give us a lot of options here we'll get back to why that is in a minute so let's say that i also want them to be a good tackler of the ball and decent pace now the way i'm doing this is holding down shift and selecting extra columns what this does is it creates tiebreaker sorts so they'll sort by the first one first then tackling 
then pace. And it just allows you to sort multiple columns by multiple values. And I just find it's really useful for filtering out players. Now I've auto-sized the columns, it's a bit easier. But then it's just a case of looking down this list and seeing for any kind of color clusters because of the way I tag my attributes or just any kind of attributes that look kind of good. So this guy here, potentially, Richard Bryan at 27, has some relatively nice, or at least in theory, relatively nice key attributes for the role. There's certainly no gaps in there, potentially, other than crossing. Whereas players up here, you can see that Marcus Gardner may well have decent tackling, but sort of lacks in every other area. So any players that I kind of like the look of, I'll just right click on them and then get a scout report for one week. Now, obviously, if they're outside your scouting range, you won't be able to use them. So just make sure that you do that accordingly and don't spend too much of your club's money if you can't actually scout them. But what I'd advise you doing is if we have a £20,000 scouting budget, this one will last us the entire year. I would say bump it up a little bit to, say, England for like a month. And then you can see even more players, but you'll actually be able to scout them for free, essentially. It just makes your life a little bit easier. And you can see that that's added a few extra players in that we can now go after. But it also means that with that knowledge, uh, Richard Richard Bryan just looks even better and has now bubbled all the way to the top of this list. So just go through the list, get a scout report on any player that you think looks kind of interesting. The reason I set my attribute colors up the way that I do is so that I can look for clusters of colors that I know are good and it just makes things way easier than looking for the numbers. Now imagine your next question is then, okay, but why not just use the attribute filters that you can set here and set the thresholds in there? And if you're playing with no attribute masking on and can already see all of these players' attributes, then honestly go nuts with this. Go This in combined with these views, you can pretty much find the perfect player for every role every single time. To the point where it's almost too easy, uh, which is again why I don't use them like that with attribute masking turned off because it's just not fun for me. But again, each to their own, it's a single player game. If you're having fun, you're playing the game correctly. So if you were playing with attribute masking off, you could literally just go, I want a guy with good crossing, it's got to be that. And then you could just find them straight off. But obviously, we can't do that here. And so the reason I don't use filters on these screens is because of the gaps. And the issue is that if a player, for example, here, this guy here, Brandon uh, Byron Watt, we don't know his crossing ability, but say I was looking for players with good crossing. The game would basically consider him to have zero crossing, and it means that it would basically exclude him from the search if you don't set it up correctly. And I find that I ended up missing a lot of players while I was doing that simply because their scout report was incomplete. And I didn't want to have that happen because you miss out on quite a lot of good players if your scouting knowledge is not quite top draw yet. And I just like being able to see all the players on one screen, and I just find it quite easy to look through them and find some very interesting things. But it's that exclusion of players is the reason I don't like to use the filters. But if you do, then hey, crack on, right? But doing it like this, you might be scrolling down and see a player that looks really good like this guy Alex Winter solid key attributes preferable maybe slightly on the lower side although we do at least know his a potential but we don't know his crossing and we can just get a quick scout report on that it might be crap but it might be great and particularly with these thresholds don't just think because we're getting to the lower end of tackling things could change if you scroll further down sometimes you'll find other players that look really quite tasty in a lot of areas as well that might still be worth a scout even as you go further down this you could find some quite well-rounded players especially once you're getting into the pool when there's more like four or five hundred for each position something else I like to try and do sometimes is actually turn off the positional filter on this side here and you'll see that that gives us a thousand players but of course it means that this is all going to be shifted slightly but occasionally you'll find a guy that may not actually be able to play the position that you're looking for but he might be perfect for it as far as his attributes concerned he's young enough to the point where you can retrain him and you might get a better player out of it by doing that as well so it's always worth to have a little look but most of these guys you're going to see here are going to be more attack minded players most likely further up the pitch and the amount of players i found over the years doing this is just insane and really really fun as well but as i said the pack of all the views will be linked in the description so you can just download them stick them in your views folder and then just import them one by one when you need them. But it is worth noting that when it comes to scouting players like this, your knowledge of them will unlock in a very specific order, well, semi-specific order, based on the positions that they play. Hence why we don't know much about the crossing ability of the players we're looking at. And the reason for that is the game considers it to be more of an attacking kind of attribute. And as a result, when your scouts are looking at players, when they're looking at defenders, they won't really be focusing on their crossing early on. And it means that you'll have to scout a lot of players a bit further to get any idea of their crossing ability. Whereas players you know more about will have that up front. It's the same way in the inverse. So you won't really know a striker's tackling until you've got them scouted a little bit more uh, thoroughly. But I find the biggest issue is when it comes to sort of attacking defenders. And that's where you'll find that the, the gaps can be a bit funky, especially with the crossing. So obviously we're just deploying this at a very low level. If you're a massive elite side, then way more players are going to be available to you because obviously more people are going to want to join you. But of course, with the pool being bigger, there's also going to be a lot more crap in there, but you'll still be able to filter through and find the guys that you want and potentially find some diamonds in the rough playing in leagues that you wouldn't expect. I remember once on a Bolton save I did a few years ago, I found an unbelievable Saudi centre back who had played in Saudi Arabia his entire career and he had like 17 tackling, 18 heading and like 18 marking and he was like 24. He was amazing and I was able to pick him up quite cheap because he'd never played in Europe or anything like that. So his rep was still quite low. And the only reason I found him is because I was looking through these. Whenever I'm doing this, I always tend to use a one week scout report on a player. That way you're not wasting 
wasting your scouts time for too long if it turns out that they're basically crap and you can cancel the report a little bit sooner. Even if they come back and they look kind of good, but you still don't know about them, I still will continually do one week reports on that player just to make sure that I can get regular updates and cancel if I need to. On a note of what to actually look for, if you're in the really lower leagues, like the depths, honestly, from here downwards, really, or even slightly above, there are certain things that I tend to focus on for certain positions, especially when it comes to strikers and defenders, especially centre-backs. Having tall centre-backs with great jumping reach and amazing heading is just an absolute cheat code in the lower leagues because your set piece efficiency is going to be absolutely wild both defending and attacking and as for strikers i would prioritize over everything else pace and acceleration because i found that they will just break the lines constantly and get a load of chances even if they haven't got very good finishing eventually a blind squirrel is going to find a nut i was doing a save in the seventh tier a few years ago and i had a striker with like 18 pace but he only had like four finishing and six composure got me 30 goals that season just because he kept getting opportunities because he was so much faster than everybody else now if you could finish he probably wouldn't have won the ballon d'or but you know you're not going to get that in the seventh tier and more of a priority perhaps on fn20 Four, seems to be high dribbling flair and technique players i've noticed that the dribbling in the match engine seems to really favor those types of players and they can just glide through people so maybe have a look at that as well if you're just struggling to find certain players and you, your options are limited so with all of those things your squad is now sorted for the first season you've gone from being bang average or wherever you were to being several steps beyond that maybe even potentially a promotion push if you have the right tactical setup but we're not talking about tactics today so then you'd be looking for future planning and maybe trying to bring in some young players that you can develop maybe to sell on or to improve the squad that you currently have over over the coming few seasons. So is there anything you can do that will allow you to do some extra planning and maybe have a head start on finding some of these players? Of course there is. So if you're managing Europe, the main contract expiry date that you're going to be expecting is June 30th of the following year or whatever. But that means in certain countries, you can approach the sign a player once they have six months left on that contract. And that date usually falls on December 29th, unless there's a leap year or stuff like that. Now, it is worth noting that English clubs cannot do this, but clubs from outside England can do this to English players. Another way to know that you're on the correct date is that if you have some players on your shortlist who may have expiring contracts within the next year or two, you'll get an email basically saying that shortlisted players are coming to an end of contract. Contract. That's how you know that it's the date. Now, I'm using a different save file here because I actually have one saved directly on this date, but this should work at pretty much any level, provided that's the way the contracts are structured in your league. And if you're in the lower leagues of England, that's actually not going to be that useful, but this is to apply to all leagues, not just England. But don't worry, I've got a little tip for England coming back around in a minute. So once you're on this date and you want to find these players, we're going to set it up a little bit like this. We want to be setting it up so that there's any kind of age restrictions you might have. That's all up to you, uh, any of this sort of stuff. But you want to set it for expiring six months. And this will show you the, in this case, 23,000 players that are out of contract in the summer. We we then obviously want to filter it by the players that are actually interested in joining us. And I'll set that to unsure, which honestly does not bring it down by much. And it's a little bit wild to me that Bobby Firmino and Alvaro Morata would actually be willing to talk to Ferenc Varos here, but I kind of like that. Using this view that I have, I normally sort this by world reputation just to try and get some of the absolute cream of the crop occasionally, because you can find some absolute monsters by doing this. Now, generally speaking, the higher the reputation, the older the player is likely to be because they've had time to generate that reputation but it's not always the case it's always worth having a little look down this and obviously if you find that there's too many older players you can just adjust the uh search filters on that one to bring it down to say 25 if you wanted to if i bring this down to 25 you can still see that there's some particularly good players that might potentially want to join us on a free transfer and we were we are able to offer these guys contracts at this exact point because we're ferenc varosh in fact wildly i could even potentially go after fabio carvalho now whether we can afford him is a very different matter but it is a possibility just a very useful way of picking up some players on completely free transfers particularly as once you've done the deal sometimes they'll let you buy them off of them really really cheap straight after that but say you're a lower division club in england in this example what i've done now is i've set up a filter that's going to show us the players that are between 15 and 19 that are expiring in six months from premier division sites in this case there is 24 of them now there is actually later in the year an email that you'll get i believe it's between april and may sort of time and it'll be called something like clubs in england announce released players or something it's just a big list of players it's usually about 15 to 20 always at that point select all of them offer them a trial almost all of them will say yes and you can sometimes pick up some absolute monsters especially when you're in like anywhere from national league south level to like league two there are some amazing players you can pick up that may not be good enough for the premier league size but my god will they be good for you i remember getting callum doyle from manchester city on a free transfer for my whitport save a few years ago doing exactly that but when it comes to december you can kind of get a bit of a preview of which sort of players you'd be able to get at that point now obviously if you are in england you won't be able to sign any of these guys yet because you're still in england but when you get to that like final month of the contract when that email comes through you can already have an idea of which players you might want to pick up and at that point you can then offer them trials point is if you're managing in the lower leagues of england some of these guys would be 
absolute world beaters for you. Will all of them sign for you? Possibly not, but you can still pick up some absolute gems doing this. It's just hard to show it because I don't actually have a save file in that exact point with Chancellor City to show you what I mean, but this is sort of what you'll expect to see. I did actually play through an entire season with Chancellor City to try and find that email, and for some reason I couldn't seem to get it to generate, but people have assured me that it does still work as normal. I just must have found a glitch or something, so it should still show up for you, but just make sure you try all those players. You can get some godlike guys from that that can really help you build for the future. But if that email doesn't actually come through to you, just head over to the scouting center, use these filters, and you should find the exact same set of players. You'll probably find a few more, actually, because it's not going to be limited to the very best ones. So that kind of covers most of the things I do when I'm managing at the very lowest level, and using these over time should allow you to bring that club that you're managing up the ladder. So let's now take things up a notch, shall we? We're now going to switch our hypothetical club. So we're now a top flight side in perhaps one of the smaller nations, or just sort of the equivalent level of that at any club, really. You know where I mean, that sort of mid-level, not really challenging for Europe, might be occasionally a conference league side, but you've built up to a certain level, if you're in those leagues anyway. Honestly, if you're in England, some of this stuff will work in the championship, to be honest. But with the work permit stuff, it can get a little bit pernickety. But for the examples I'm giving here, I'm using Hungary as the league, because it's one I'm very familiar with, having enjoyed my save there last year. But these same principles will apply to other leagues, but just be careful with the way that the leagues have registration rules, work permits, all that sort of jazz. That's all going to depend on whatever league you're in. Now, I should preface this by saying that the stuff we're about to sort of discuss is sort of semi-predicated on using the database setup that I made a video about last week. However, that doesn't mean this stuff won't work if you're not using it. It just means that the results might be somewhat diminished or potentially even improved, actually, if you're using a league on playable that maybe I'm not in my normal database. It just varies, right? So just bear that in mind. For this example, I'm using Molfeheva, uh, one of the better sides in Hungary, but they're not usually the title-winning team. Lately, that's been more Ferenc Farage, but they'll still be playing in Europe semi-regularly. And with most of the other stuff we just discussed, you should be able to bring a team pretty much anywhere to that type of level. But it's how you take them to the next step. The key difference here is that you will need a larger scouting range in order for these things to work. But if you are a club at this level, you should have enough scouting range available to you that you can make these things work. We have a scouting budget of £390,000. Obviously, if I turn this to the very top, we actually have worldwide scouting, which is not a problem. And even if your budget's a little bit lower than that, you should still be able to get at least European scouting or worldwide for a month or two, which should be enough. But obviously, if you can't afford to do it on a worldwide scale, just sort of scale back the areas which you're looking for transfers to areas that you can scout. That should be fairly self-explanatory, but I feel like I should say it. So the first thing I want to talk about is one of my favorite things that we discovered last year, and that is the Belgian amateur method. Because believe it or not, when we were looking at Belgium, th that's how we found it. So there you go. Creative, aren't we? Now, this will work best if you're using a larger database, but it will still work, hopefully, if you're using a smaller one. It'll, again, just be slightly diminished. So basically, what we noticed, almost at random, is that there was a lot of non-contract and amateur players popping up in the under-18 and above sides for the Belgium national team. And it's not just the under-18s. You'll see them in the under 19 squads here as well. There's an amateur, two non-contracts there, sometimes all the way up to the under 20s and under 21s. In this example, that isn't the case, but I've actually seen players in the under 21 squads who are amateur or non-contract doing this. The thing about this though, is that these players can be picked up completely for free because they don't have proper contracts with their clubs. And because of that, they often don't seem to want particularly large wages. Another side effect is a lot of these players you'll find, just let's find an example of one of the ones in the under 19 squad as they're slightly better potentially, is they often will have played a decent amount of matches despite still being extremely young. So in this case, this guy's already played 28 senior matches at the age of 17, which means that their development curve is going to be slightly accelerated as they have had that exposure to first team football at a very early age. So their CA tends to be higher as well. Now, this isn't exclusive to Belgium. We just found that Belgium was an absolute hotbed of this. There are other nations that this work in as well, and I'm going to run you through them. This view that I'm using is baked into the skin, but again, I'll link it in the description if you don't have that, because it's just really useful to be able to see all this on one screen. Now, this save doesn't have attribute masking turned on, which is why we can see all the players' attributes, uh, just for the example here, but obviously this will be a lot more vague if you're playing this on a normal save. But what you're really looking for is any player whose contract type is set to either amateur or non-contract. Those are the, the, the boosty bonus ones. And the younger they are, and the higher squad they're in, in theory, the likelihood of them being better is even greater. Not always, but it seems to be the case. Goalkeepers less so, as I find there's always random keepers about. So the best places to look are Belgium. I find Croatia can be quite useful as well, as well as Denmark, Greece, Netherlands, Norway, and Serbia. Those are like my favorite hunting grounds for these, uh, over the European nations at least. The Netherlands is especially good, and Denmark, I find, is much better on FM24 than it was last year, so definitely worth looking at as well. But you can see here with Croatia, there's a ton of them in here. Denmark, loads of amateur players in there. Under-19 squad, a couple, well, one dude in here too, but he's probably one of the better players. Greece, you can see there's a nice chunk of them. Netherlands, there's a few of them in there as well. If you go to the under-18 squad, you'll find a few more in there. Ignore the youth contract ones. Those guys are not for you. Norway is absolutely full of them. I mean, look at this guy for crying out loud. <laughs> look at the state of him. So I would just select any players you're looking for like that, and then just go report one week again like you were. Now, going through these, I found 97 players just looking at the 
the few nations that we had access to here. And that's just with one little search that took me two or three minutes. Now, obviously, it'll take a little while for your scouts to get through them, but not that long if you've got a good number of them. It is very worth noting, though, that this seems to work best between seasons three and six of your saves. But after that, it will still be functional before then a little bit less so. And I think the reason for this is that in the early stages of a save, there's less players populating these squads. So the, the game sort of boosts these amateur teams up a little bit to give them players to, to fill out these teams, basically, because of the ad players to playable teams, maybe? Not entirely sure. But then as the save wears on a little bit, more of the larger sides in those nations will be producing regens that will then sort of end up stealing a lot of these spots. So I find that between seasons three and six, that's when it's absolutely massive. And then it will dwindle for the rest of the save after that. But by then, you'll have probably exceeded past the benefits of this anyway. So I've gone and scouted all those guys and you can see there's quite a lot. Also, Portugal. Portugal's also very good, as you can see from the wild amount of Portuguese players we found in here as well. Um, the guy that really stands out, though, was the guy that I actually just showed you, Trond Nordley. Five-star potential, two-star CA, completely free. Probably wouldn't want a lot of money either. He's an A-rated player that you can just have for free. And the same applies to a lot of these other guys. There was actually some more in here as well, but I couldn't keep them all in this report as it keeps randomly deleting them. There's one other guy I want to show you. And that's this dude here, Rufus Chroma. I don't know if this is his actual picture or not. It's odd that he's wearing a Fire Nord kit and thing, and he was a player at Groningen. So I suspect it's because of this random issue with the player ID. So he may or may not be a regent. I really don't know. But regardless, he showed up as a player on either amateur or non-contract basis and was picked up on a free transfer by Inter while I was doing the scouting and he is very very good indeed my point being is you could have found this guy much earlier than this had you done this in say season two and would have picked him up on a free transfer absolutely no problem with a club like Molfeheva uh, rather than risking him moving to Inter or somewhere like that point being you can find some very good players in fact based on his ID I'm almost certain that isn't actually him and that he is a regen but it's just FM is a bit weird at the moment with the IDs we might have to make a video on that at some point but essentially because of the way it's not loading certain teams it means that when you don't have a league loaded it's allocating real players IDs to regens basically and it means that their face pack pictures, even if they're not in a face pack, say they're in the base game, for example, are showing up on like fake players. And it's not really ideal. But that is a story for another day. Just done a little Google search. I can find no note of this chap being a real player. So I'm guessing that this is just that exact issue. But on my save last year in Hungary with MTK, we picked up probably over the course of about four seasons, like 25 of these players. Some of them were so good that they actually went on to get senior caps for Belgium. And one guy was a starting 11 quality centre back for us, like four star CA at the age of, I think, 18, to give you an idea. And it obviously will vary from save to save but there are some monsters that you can find doing this and i just love it because they're free and when you're managing at this sort of level you're still on a bit of a budget and you want to find players that you can maybe flip for good cash and one of the best ways to build a club up to that very next level once you're here is to find players on the cheap that are undervalued and either develop them into world beaters yourself or sell them on for huge money that you can then reinvest and that's really the only way to take yourself to the fully next level because you're not going to be able to buy guys that are going to actually strengthen you immediately and on that topic another way of finding insane players for absolute peanuts is to take that same set of principles over to the scouting and filters screen so what we're going to do is we're going to set this to 19 and under just because reasons it's just a random threshold then we're going to set their contract status as either amateur or non-contract it's annoying that you can't do both but it is what it is or maybe you can no you can only do contract type there there might be a way to display amateur and non-contract players in the same search but for now i only know that this bit down here works just fine but if you do know a way let me know i'm very curious because for the moment i don't see that you can do that so either sort it by non-contract or by amateur you can use one or the other but then what you want to do is find that they're based in somewhere now obviously belgium could still work for this and you'll find a load more players that are you know good enough for that type of thing as well you'll see that in belgium there's actually 35 players rather than the ones you just looked at however the chances are the ones that you've probably seen are most likely to be the best guys already though it isn't always the case as we've got a guy called renato here who looks to be quite decent frankly and he's played a lot of games already 61 appearances at 17 but i find that this setup is better for searching slightly larger nations especially france germany and spain so there are 135 players on amateur contracts currently in the french leagues that we know about if i switch that to amateur it goes to 150 contracts so you again you make sure you check both of them as there are potentially some quite tasty looking players down there and this guy's actually wanted by uh second who are a team in our division now again this view is baked into the skin but if you don't have it it'll be in the description and the reason i use this view is because it has things like world rep obviously which is useful for other things but i like sorting these lists by the number of league appearances or career appearances the players have made because generally speaking the more appearances they're making, the chances are, one, they're going to have developed a little bit more, and two, there was a reason why they're making those appearances in the first place, in theory. Especially if you find a player that's got a lot of appearances and is actually younger than some of his compatriots, much like this chap here. Now, it could just be because they were short of a position, and that looks to be the case here, but it's not always. Point being, if you see a guy who's like 16 and has a load of league appearances, there's a bloody good reason for it normally. And so the reason I have these filters on is because it means I can go through and just go, okay, these guys have played a decent number of matches. I'm going to set an arbitrary threshold of however many games you feel is a reasonable amount, and 
and they're just going to scout these guys. And just getting like a few hundred of these reports won't take more than like probably a month to get most of them done. And there's almost always some absolutely monstrous players in there. And I find that this is especially clear in Brazil. But you'll note if I search them by Brazil in that age range with either amateur or non-contract, no players will show up. That's because to get the Brazilian ones, you have to do something slightly different. So set this to any and then go into here and set the value of the player to basically zero. If you set it to zero, you'll still find loads. There's 260 players that have got contracts in Brazil that are valued at zero between these ages. And you can see that some of them are playing quite a lot. One other fun thing about Brazil that I like to do as well is sometimes in Brazil, there is players who are on absurdly cheap release clauses too, and it pretty keeps their value down. So what I like to do is set them with a, a maximum value of say, I don't know, let's try 40,000 pounds and a minimum value of like a pound. The lowest the game will let you go is, uh, is 500 pounds. But what you'll do is you'll find a few players here who are very, very cheap and most likely because of release clauses, but might also be excellent players for you to potentially have a look at and maybe pick up. Same thing works for Argentina, but mostly Brazil is the key month for this. But if in doubt, just turn that one off and you'll find an absolute gluttony of ridiculous players, potentially. I'm going to show you what I mean, because I'm going to set up some scout reports and show you how they sort of look once you get a bit further in. So these are some of the players once they're actually finally a bit more scouted. Again, I can't seem to get all of them to show in one box. There was a couple of other five star guys that then just sort of disappear if you try to wait for them all to be scouted. They'll also get reports on like random leagues around them. And there's this one particular guy here, Andres Gaviri, who's actually on an amateur contract in Colombia, who has been brought through for the same thing. I think it's probably because they play against the team i don't know point being sometimes these will come through as well and he's just ridiculous and all these players are available completely for free and look at the wage demands on some of these guys they're very very low indeed this guy here is two and a half star ca and is actually a genuinely really solid player who you'd be able to pick up for basically peanuts let me guess he's wanted by another hungarian side yes of course he is and hilariously there's our old friend facing the game jan cavalcanti because of course he is now before we move on to sort of the big kahuna and a few of the big things that i use at the very elite level and clubs getting towards that point i feel like we should at least discuss recruitment focuses i personally loathe them i I found that it basically somehow complicated and dumbed down scouting at the same time in ways that I didn't really particularly enjoy. And as a result, I've kind of done anything to avoid using them. But that isn't out of pure stubbornness. I've just found that the other things we've been doing have allowed us to find a lot of the same players a lot faster and in larger quantities. And that's really what you're looking for at the end of the day. I just find them too slow and ineffective. And with that stuff that we did just look at, again, when it comes to work permits and stuff in England, that may not be particularly viable for you. But again, this is a scouting guide for every league, not specific just to England. You'd have to sort of pick and choose what can work for the league that you're in, but you will know that information a lot better than I will. Now, there's only one set of recruitment focuses that I actually use and find work particularly well. And that is the fantastic work of Iron Owl. But instead of wasting your time with that, I'm going to let him show you how that works instead of me babbling. Recruitment focuses. Those things that you either completely ignore because you think they're useless, or you overuse and slow your game down with. I'm here with a video that's going to be released simultaneously with this one you're watching now that should hopefully explain how to get the most out of your recruitment focuses and look for either wonder kids or at least players who are going to be exceptional for your club, whatever level you're at. So what you need to do is you go to scouting, go to recruitment focuses, create a recruitment focus, and you select this to be any and any so that it looks for every position. Transfer, because you don't want to loan a wonder kid. Come on now. Set your age range. Now, importantly, you set your age range to be each individual age that you want to allow homegrown status. So 15, 16, 17, and 18. Set this to ongoing, untick this button, confirm, rinse and repeat for each age group. Because of unticking this box at the bottom here, you can actually set a further one for 15 to 18 and get completely different players again. And also just to note, I set the minimum current ability as five silver stars, so you should get youth academy players, but I set this as a max to three because really we're completely ignoring that system and nipping it in the bud. So a few days have passed and I've got this inbox item for recruitment focuses and it will tell you which ones are in progress and what the scouts have been working on. You can then click one of the in progress tabs that has got a number of players, sort by potential and look at all of these five star players we've suddenly come across. Lovely stuff. So what you then do is you highlight them, the ones that you're interested in, you set your own threshold, whether you want to look at just the five star, just four and a half star plus, but you then right click them, add them to shortlist. I'll show you in my video what I do with regards to the shortlists and then right click again and scout the player. So the scouts will basically concentrate on them further. So you put them in your shortlist, let them marinate for a bit, find out which ones you like, which ones are interested in joining you, which ones you can afford and then you can have a look through each player individually and decide whether to make a bid or not. So let me introduce you to Afonso Moreira here. 2.7 million pound bid lodged with Sporting Club de Portugal. 
five star potential ability and he is looking pretty tasty. And here he is three years later, still four and a half star potential, but worth 26 million and the fifth best player at the club. And just to prove that this doesn't only work for Premier League or at least elite level teams, here at AFC Wimbledon, I've done the same process and ended up with a shortlist that looks a bit like this. So it can still work for you whatever level you're at. And the further you go into your save, the better it becomes. Three years later, and Kingsley Okoto here is coming to Fulham for 2.6 million. Thanks for having me on this video, and back to you. If you want a more detailed rundown of how these things work, I'm going to leave a link to Iron Owl's full video about this exact thing in the description. And while you're over there, please do drop him a sub. Fantastic content creator. And I know there's a lot of you that will probably see this video, so I'd like to help out someone else as well who just makes cool content. One of the last things I want to talk about before we get to the big dogs, I suppose, is facing the games. Because technically, you can kind of use this as a scouting tool as well. For those of you unaware, facing the games are those players that come up constantly in every save, even though they're a regen, you'll see their names. I'm looking at you, Jan Cavalcanti. I'm looking at you, Kane Fuller Love, Giorgio Valia, and others. Probably sick of the sight of them by now if you do a lot of long term saves. But essentially, they are regens that are pre programmed in FM to generate. They're usually like devs, members of the community, stuff like that. I find personally there's far too many of them in a save, and it kind of ruins the immersion of the randomness of long term saves. But that's just a rant for another day. Point being, if you type in face in the game or one word into the sidebar, you can then get a giant list of them. Now, some of these ones you're not going to find because a lot of these are ones I was setting up for the Patreon per of being a regen in the Malta save. I'm looking at you, Malipnos. Point being, you get a big list of them, and it does seem that it seems to sort of bubble towards the top the very best ones on here, so that you could use as a potential scouting tool, but I don't particularly like it. But again, it's a single-player game. If you're having fun, you're playing it right. But enough about that. Let's switch the hypothetical one last time to a slightly higher level. So let's now say that you're either one of the very top teams in a smaller nation, i.e. regularly winning the title, qualifying for the Champions League, all that jazz, or you're a slightly sub-elite team in one of the larger nations like England, Germany, Germany, France, Spain, etc. So you're still regularly possibly playing in Europe or in England at the very least. You're benefiting from the huge amount of television money. You have worldwide scouting. You can kind of do what you like. It's just a question of focusing that. That's the level we're at now. Truthfully, though, you can actually start a lot of this stuff a bit earlier than that, pretty much from the moment you've got worldwide scouting and a little bit of a budget to, be, to go behind you. But I thought this was a sensible threshold just to keep that sort of theme going. So something I used to do right back in the day, I don't do this anymore because it's just a bit of a piss take, is if you go to world and then you go to transfers and then you go to youth and takes uh, it'll literally just show you a giant list of all the players that have come through youth and takes over the course of that year that's five thousand people Matt. now weirdly in fm24 it describes everyone as a free transfer which doesn't make any sense because if you click any of these players they will have clubs and you can see this guy was atletico nacional and this guy will also be atletico oh he's not actually he's from junior as it goes that's generally how it works i think this is a visual bug for fm24 it's sort of irrelevant but i just thought i'd bring that to your attention if you see that and go oh god that's the reason and what i used to do is i would just select these in chunks of 50 go get scout report on them and every year go through like I don't know, sometimes like 5,000 players. And that's a lot of players. It's a lot of crap. And it takes a very long time. It's not particularly efficient. But I know some people still do this. And hey, more power to you, I suppose. I just wanted to make you aware it was possible. Another thing I used to do was to go to the under 19s and under 20 squads of various large nation national teams and whatnot. And I would just select the entire list of players like that get scout report on those guys and every year i would do the exact same thing i'd go through every single country get scout reports but again the problem with this is that you end up with again sometimes like three or four thousand reports that you've got to search through yourself and it's a lot of it's a lot of hassle basically it takes a long time to set up every single year and it's a lot of hassle to work through and 90 percent of those players are probably going to be crap a lot of the time and it just takes a very long time it does still work and you will cover pretty much every player you could possibly imagine minus a few really young players but it still takes a long time and we found a better way and that bringing things full circle is the team report functionality that we discussed right back when we were talking about senior affiliates so on any team's profile page in the game just as an example sticking with colombia here on say atletico nacional we can go to their page and look up here you can see a photo that it says team reports and you can assign a scout of yours to get a team report on that team so just going to click that one for the moment and while we're here on their b team as well don't know if there's actually any players in their b team squad no there isn't so that was kind of pointless but their under 20 squad is absolutely stacked as you can see and what this does is your scout will now take a single day which is really good progress to generate a mini report that will give you at least vague outlines of the quality most importantly potential and ability of the players in that squad this stuff again will be very vague if you have attribute masking turned on for the purposes of this i've turned it off just to show you some examples best thing is you can get one of these reports every single day you can kind of see where this is going now so what we started doing basically was going to any major clubs that we knew were kind of 
talent hotbeds and getting a team report on their under 19 squads, sometimes their B teams, and then just waiting for those things to come through and have a look at the players. However, we found we were missing out on a lot of players by doing this, as with a large database like the one I've got set on, there's so many clubs producing players that we simply couldn't cover all the bases. And then we figured out how we could. So this is how we solved that. Going again to any of these squads in the same way that we would have done before. We then, using this view that I've set up here, it, we can filter by the club. Again, this one is uh, baked into the skin, but you can download it separately as well. I just find it so useful for doing this particular type of scouting and many others. I kind of use this as the default squad view for any squad that isn't mine but then what we do is we filter it by the clubs and any clubs that have multiple players in these squads from this screen we can just right click and get a team report more importantly on their under 20 side or their youth teams essentially although for south america i find it's useful to do all of their squads just in case the reason in this case we're looking at clubs with multiple players in here is because it stands to reason that they've had a slightly larger youth intake now depending on your database size certain clubs will have youth intakes of varying sizes to maintain the database size and whatnot and that means in theory recently there's been a solid youth intake at this club and they've got a decent amount of players in those teams that are worth scouting. Though if you are looking at some of the larger nations like Colombia, Brazil, anyone like that, I would probably advise you to do it on every single team you see here just in case. You can always filter it out later and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But when looking at slightly smaller nations, it is best to focus on ones that you see for multiple clubs. Just using Bosnia as an example, if you see a lot of players from like uh, Zrizny Mostar, FK Sarajevo, those are likely the clubs you'll see but the smaller clubs might produce one regen a year, but it means it's probably not worth scouting their entire club just for that because it does take an entire day. And the main reason that we use this menu, one, it displays a list of, in theory, clubs that are producing regens more recently, but also, as far as I'm aware, this is the only menu in the game that allows you to right-click on a club, and that's their full team, potentially, and actually get a report on their under-20 squad from the same menu. Just as an example, if I go to the actual Colombian, like, nation page, then go to major clubs and try and do the same thing, you'll notice here that if I try to get a team report, it will only let me select the first team squad of that club, and not their under-19 squad. Because uh, if you could do it from this menu, it would be swell, but you can't. And the only one I've found to do it on is on the actual natural team squads themselves. But this just makes it a lot faster. So all I do is I go through and get those reports set up. It might take you about 20 minutes the first time you do this, depending on how many you do. If you're targeting, say, South America and Europe, I like to kind of do a smattering of all continents because there are some great teams that produce talent all across the world. And sometimes that can really add up. I think by the end of my last save, we had 800 teams <laughs> that we were actively going after. But for now, we're going to do a smaller smattering so I can show you some examples. And I know that 20 minutes thing might sound slightly prohibitive, but do not worry. This is not one of these things where you have to spend 20 minutes in one go every single season to make this work. There is a better way, which I didn't explain when I made the original video about this because we didn't really find it until after. So yeah, go through and queue up all those team reports in a big row. And obviously you can choose which teams based on what sort of tastes you're looking for. That's entirely down to you. As long as you do a good amount, you'll be fine because it will take a while to work through these reports because as I said, you can only get one per day. So if you do 365 reports, it's going to take you a full year to get through the entire list of them. But this also works in a good way because no matter how many scouts you have, you can still only do one a day and therefore it's worth assigning these reports to the best scout that you have because it makes no difference who you're sending because they're still going to get the same number of reports per day. So you might as well just overwork one dude. Out of interest, I'm using Ferenc Farosh as the base team for this just because again, it's hungry and I already had the database set up. So then once you've set those club reports up, if you go over to Scouting Center and go to Team Report Priorities, you'll be able to see a big list of all of the teams that you've just done. I did 153 for this example. Uh, I would advise you to do more, but again, personal taste. This screen might look slightly different in the base game. The skin I have has the squad size baked in, but you can add extra columns in this screen, or you certainly used to be able to, as FM screwed itself up. Regardless, you can see that from here if you have this skin. And you might want to quickly have a little look here just to make sure that you've not accidentally scouted any squads that have, say, zero or one players in because it's a bit of a waste of your scout's time because the player you were looking at might not have even been in that squad, but you scouted that anyway. It's just worth that to check. But it will vary from year to year depending on when the youth intakes happen and all sorts of other jazz. You'll also see the opposite sometimes happens where, for example, Independiente Medellin have 39 players just in their under-20 squad. I mean, <laughs> there's bound to be one absolute monster in here. Once you've got that cleaned up, you're good to go. After this, just proceed back to playing your save absolutely normally. It will take between four and five days for the first report to come through. I don't know why, um, it just does. But once that happens, it will be one after another, like clockwork, every single day for the foreseeable future. But once they start coming through your inbox, they'll look a little bit like this. They won't always. Sometimes it will say something like, I was unable to compile a report because there wasn't enough information. That's more to do with the tactics of the team. It doesn't mean there aren't any players there. So make sure that you always click and actually have a look at the squad just in case. So in this example with um, Salzburg's Academy, you can see there is an absolute dirge of ridiculous talent in here. But obviously there would be the one of the best academies in Austria. So point being, once you're in here though, you can just see these players that you kind of find interesting, then get a scout report on them. And they're already being scouted, of course, because I've already done this one, but still. And the reason this is an advantage over the other method before is because it means that you're only scouting properly the very best players that you come across doing this. You're also doing it over a longer period of time, which means that your scouts aren't getting bogged down and you're not having to deal with too many things at once. You're just slowly adding to the 
the list of players that you're going after, always on one week scout reports. The other cool thing about this is some of these guys might be so young, like this guy's 16, that he may not have even been in one of those national teams that we were looking at, but you get a chance to potentially get like early dibs on a guy like this, or at the very least have a chance to scout them a little bit further before they maybe come of age and you can track them further. It means that you're not going to miss anybody like that in theory, though you may still miss the occasional like single intake player that comes through a really obscure club. It does happen from time to time, but the only way to truly avoid that is just to add more and more and more teams into your rotation. Hence why we had like 800 to 1000 at one point. Any players I like the look of, one week scout and it whittles down a lot of the crap before we have to do anything because you're only going to be actually scouting 1% of the players that actually exist like that and it just saves you an awful lot of time and you can get so much faster progress with it. I always use one week scout reports for the same reasons that I explained earlier but just in case you skipped around in the video and you missed that part, I use one week scout reports because it allows me to get weekly updates on the scouting progress of a player which doesn't always seem to happen with longer periods. It also means that if suddenly a player just drops out of nowhere and I'm just like actually no they're just crap, I can cancel it then and there and it doesn't waste time and I don't have to go and find the scout report to cancel it, I can just discard and it just works faster for me. But again that's down to personal preference, you do you. And the key thing to do is before you leave this screen once you've looked at the report, head up to the top and then get another report on the exact same thing you were looking at. This will then add it to the back end of the queue. And if you have a large enough queue, it means by the time you see this report again, there's probably going to have been two more youth intakes in that meantime. And you don't have to worry about then doing it all in one giant chunk. It will still essentially take the same amount of time to do it, but you're spreading it over the course of many, many seasons. And it just doesn't feel like you're taking that same time. It's just, it's not actually quicker, but it feels like it's quicker. But I would still say it's still worth looking through every year some of those national team squads to find if there's any clubs you might have missed to keep adding to the list. We started off with about five and then slowly built up more and more and more as people kept suggesting teams and you can just build on it slowly over time and just keep it moving like this giant conveyor belt of youth talent. It's also worth knowing that occasionally your scouts might find an older player from that same club that you haven't even asked them to scout and they may well send you some information about that player as I think you can see as an example here. Some of these guys that are slightly younger but still in the senior squad even though we didn't scout the senior squad um, are getting recommended to us because they might still be possibilities for players. So just go about your business every single day, check the report that comes through, select and scout any players you like and add it to the end of the cycle, repeat the next day. Eventually, after a few weeks of you doing that, you'll start to have your inboxes looking a little bit like this. And you can already see that there's um, a, well, again, a gluttony of outrageous talent that is starting to bubble to the top. Now, they won't appear every single week as you're going to be scouting on and off. This is just one I chose as an example. You can see that Dinamo, well, they're always a good place to look for players. And well, this season is absolutely no different as they've got this guy, Sven Hervoy, Six foot two, six. I mean, look at the state of him. He's got very low aggression for a centre back, though, which is a little bit concerning, but still a wonderful player. But from here, you can make decisions about the players that are in your inbox, whether to consistently send them out for another one week scout report, or if they've maybe fallen off the bottom of being useful to you, you can just select a load of those and discard them from here, and it will automatically cancel the assignments. One thing I will say, though, is once you feel that they're fully scouted, um, which you can sort of see by hovering over this, and you can see, or you used to be able to see anyway, um, extensive knowledge at least. Bring back the percentages, I say. Sometimes it will say extensive knowledge and fully scouted, even when they're not. Uh, so it's always worth for me sending them around for an extra week of scouting when it says they're fully scouted. And I find that sometimes that can cause wild fluctuations in especially their potential predictions. And it's often worth sending them to your best scout for like a once over right at the very end, just in case he finds any flaws that someone else didn't, because that does happen quite a lot. Once you're happy with a player, you can just go about trying to bring them in at any point, really. It doesn't have to be in a transfer window. You can just sign them up, get them done in advance, and then not have to worry about it. And they'll just join you in the next window. I often find that I do a lot more transfer business essentially outside of the transfer windows these days than I do in the, in the middle of them because it's just much easier to sign players. Now, not all players are going to want to talk to you and this is going to be for a variety of factors. It could be the quality of the player, the reputation of the player or the club they're at, your reputation, etc. Also, the age of the player does really matter. I find that anyone under 17 in South America is almost never going to speak to you no matter how good you are they will want to continue their development at that club but the moment they hit 17 it's just like bang straight in there you can sign them but that will vary depending on all the those factors I mentioned and it varies from country to country African players it's wildly variable sometimes you can sign them at 16 and sometimes they won't sign for you at all, actually. It just seems to never let them sign for you. I'm looking at you two feet, Ganem. That was a guy in a save a little while ago that wouldn't sign for us until he was like 27. It was very strange. So again, you'll have to play that by ear, but at the very least, you'll have a huge list of players that you can potentially go after to start working through, and you'll no doubt find some absolutely crazy talent in there. And this is the main system I use once I get worldwide scouting available to me because it's just such a good way of hoovering up talent. Now, obviously, as you become more and more elite, less and less of these players are going to be viable because a guy that is maybe five-star now 
when you all say PSG, that could be three and a half stars. You just don't know. So there will be less players. And that actually makes your scouting slightly easier in a way because there'll be less players that you'll have to look at and you can whittle things down even sooner. But what I will say is when you first start doing this, there's going to be so many players that are good enough for you that you will not know what to do with them. And that's the best part because then you can just go for the cheapest ones. As with any of these methods, again, it will depend on what league you're managing and whether you could even bring these guys in because of work permits, restrictions and all that. But again, this is just a basis for everything. If you can't, that sucks, but that's the that's the breaks of managing in X League, right? So I love managing in Hungary. You can basically sign anybody you like. The only rule in Hungary is there just is no rules. It's brilliant. So I've now gone to a point where all of those are complete and the scouting is done for most players. And you can see that we're still in the same year. We've barely even gone that far and we've found some top quality talent. What I've done is I've added them to a short list and we found a basically 155 players uh, just off of those teams that we did. Look how far I have to scroll before we even get out of five-star potential. <laughs> it is absolutely... Wait, is that all of them? Oh no, this there we go. Took a little while is my point. Now these players vary in age, obviously, depending on what squad they're at, from all the way up to 21, who will definitely be a real player, all the way down to a guy here called Asher Cohen at Maccabi Haifa, who's only 15 years old as a goalkeeper. And okay, one-on-one -on -one solid, reflex is okay. He's six foot tall. He's probably going to be a decent keeper one day. Honduran Israeli. You just don't see that very often. Just highlighting a few players that look kind of interesting in here. There's this chap here, five-star potential, insane CA as well. Might be a little bit on the pricey side, potentially, though, because we are mid-season. There's this guy here, 18-year-old Australian Serb, Joseph McDonald at Chukuricki. Fast, solid dribbling, very solid dribbling, actually. Decent enough crossing for 18 years old, and he'd be available for under £3 million, probably somewhere around the 2.2 million range. And you could structure that, too. And he'd probably be verging in the first team already at 18. And this is my point. These guys can be picked up very, very cheap, very, very easily. And you could build your squad out with these guys very, very early and really build towards something awesome. And that's just scratching the surface. With a much larger pool of clubs to look at, you could find even more. I think when I made this video originally, I did it with 800. And I think I had a list of like 500 players after one season. And I think 400 of them were like, Five star CA. Sorry, CA? PA. Five star CA would be ridiculous. But there's also players like this. Dusan Juric. Look at the state of it. He's 19 years old and he's already this good. And again, the price is particularly good, frankly, because a guy like this, if he signed for Inter Milan, would immediately be worth £40 million. It's just the facts. And you could pick him up for under £5 million, probably more like three. And that's what I mean. These are the kind of players you can uncover with this. So there we have it. Everything I currently use when it comes to scouting in FM. And I know I said this earlier, but I feel like I'll iterate it again. You don't have to do any of this it's just there if you want to if you needed a little example of something extra to do maybe there's something in here that could help you right so if this video has been helpful to you in some way please do drop a like this has taken quite a long time to make but i wanted to make sure that it was all in one big video to kind of get everything covered in one i'm sure i'll find some new stuff this year that will then have to addendum in new videos anyway but this is everything i currently know so yeah subscribe if you're new and yeah i'll see you lovely people in the next one hold your gun capybara bye bye